right. Well, welcome everyone to PCI Ventures Annual Showcase hosted by Venture Cafe Philadelphia. Venture Cafe is a program of the University City Science Center and hosts weekly programming from 3 to 8 p.m. to convene innovators in a wide range of fields to share resources and make things happen. Currently, we're in webinar mode, so you will only be able to see and hear myself. Um, please know that while we are in webinar mode, the session is being recorded. Uh, when we move into the networking portion of the session, the recording will stop. While we're in webinar mode, please again, feel free to engage using the chat feature along the side. Uh, there's the general chat if you'd like to speak to everyone. Um, and there's also a private chat to speak to individuals, including myself, if you have any questions. Um, this virtual gathering, we're very excited, uh, will recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of PCI Ventures portfolio companies over the past year. First, we will hear from a few speakers and then we will break out into our networking space. I'll provide some more details and instructions on how to do that um, after we hear from our speakers. First, I will bring up PCI Ventures Executive Director, Michael Poizel up to the stage. Let me do so. All right, Michael, if you are able to turn on your mic and camera and join me here. I have the camera on. Can you hear me as well? Yes. Excellent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming this evening. I really appreciate everyone making the attempt to do it through uh, a uh, virtual environment. And certainly my thanks to the, to the Venture Cafe for making this possible and allowing us to use their platform, which I think as you see as we go on, uh, it's really an innovative and interesting way for us to get together. It's not in person, but it's the next best thing that we can do. And we're all looking forward to next year doing this once again in, in person and having a great event with cocktails and lots of food and, and good friends around us. So we really look forward to that. But, and I even got a thumbs up. Uh, but uh, for now this year, uh, in this format, I wanna look back over the last year for a few minutes and uh, really celebrate the, the great year that we've had in the midst of all of the turmoil. We certainly want to uh, respect and and honor the, the people that have lost their lives through the pandemic and, uh, and really understand the seriousness of the last year, uh, but also to look at, at how our companies and so many companies in the Philadelphia, office, Philadelphia area have uh, strived to not only maintain their businesses, but to grow in these adverse conditions. Uh, just to, to stop and make sure, because we have a lot of great new guests tonight, to uh, make sure I, I mentioned everybody who we are and what we do. This group is PCI Ventures. Our mission is to assist the faculty of the University of Pennsylvania in commercializing the research through the creation of companies. We have been working on these types of projects for the last 10 years, have started over 200 companies, have had multiple exits and have our companies raised huge sums of money to be able to grow their businesses. Uh, even having one of our companies now has raised over $100 million, uh, which is just so exciting for us, for the University of Pennsylvania, for all of the teams involved, and for the city of Philadelphia, which we want to see benefit from all of this increased entrepreneurial activity. I also want to thank my team who's on here tonight. We have uh, Mike Vishowitz, my second in command and uh, portfolio manager and such a, a great part of everything we do. Uh, Bhavana Mohanraj is our other portfolio manager. And then uh, Raquel Giron, who is our coordinator, who does everything to keep all of this together and things moving forward. Uh, she's the glue that keeps our operation going. And last but not least, uh, Jamie Sweet, who is our program manager, who did so much work to get this together tonight and does an incredible job of working with not just our companies in the portfolio, but all of the companies on the Pennovation Works campus in helping them to move their businesses forward through all of the content that she creates around the programs. So I appreciate everything all of them do for us and uh, it's great to have them here as part of the event. And certainly reach out to them when we get to the networking session uh, to talk to them individually. So uh, the other thing I wanted to do uh, is to look back over the last year and, and highlight some of the companies in particular. Uh, hopefully through some of the networking tables, you can learn more. And, and with any of these companies that I mentioned, if you're interested in learning more, 
absolutely feel free to reach out to us directly and, and get that information. So just to, to run through some of the exciting things that happened over the last year for our portfolio, um, one of the highlights of our portfolio is Charisma Therapeutics. They've raised, uh, as I said, they're the company that's raised over $100 million. They raised $59 million at the turn of the year uh, in December, January to launch their clinical study. And they're now in human beings for the first time, which is so very exciting. And we're really interested to see how they progress over the next year uh, with the patients and the, how the patients react to the treatment. Um, they're attempting to treat uh, cancer tumors in the body through their very interesting and new technology using macrophages to be able to attack the cancer. Another one of our companies, uh, Nia Therapeutics, is uh, trying to improve memory in people, which is just such a, a far out kind of science fiction thing to be able to do, but they were able to get a million dollar subcontract from the government to finish their engineering prototype and continue to make progress on their technology, uh, which it would just be so exciting if they can get to a point that and helping people with such a devastating aspect of, of getting older and, and even traumatic brain injury as well. Um, Ghost Robotics, they've been in the news quite a bit, uh, numerous press releases of what they've been able to do this year. Uh, so many robots they've been deploying, uh, ground-based dog-like robots that are now guarding military bases, uh, helping to do perimeter security in so many locations. And we just expect this next year to be a huge growth for them. And we're really excited to see how they are progressing. Um, and some of the biggest news we have of the past year we just received recently, which is that our company, uh, Quantitative Radiology Solutions, QRS, I like to say easier, uh, just received FDA approval for their device, uh, being able to help treat patients getting radiation therapy for cancer. And we're just so excited. This is our first product to receive FDA clearance, and it's a great time for us. Yes, lots of clapping. We're all very excited for them and for their future and where they're headed. Um, and great for our portfolio to have a company that uh, has received FDA clearance. It's just so great. Um, this next year, you know, for them and for so many of our companies will be an opportunity to build on all of the hard work that they put in this past year. Um, and last but not least, in terms of our portfolio companies, I wanna highlight Exxon Technologies for everything that, that they've done. Um, Really an incredible year for them and in the, in the midst of a, such a challenging year because so much of their business is international and they're not able to travel uh, internationally. How do you engage those customers and how do you reach a base that's so far away when, when you're stuck here during the pandemic? And uh, I give so much credit to the team to be able to do that. They signed a major partnership with Scanvic this past year, which gives them uh, such far-reaching uh, distribution into the mining industry of which they serve with their flying robots, um, but also all the work they've done in uh, achieving the government sector as well, and even getting into construction and inspection. So they, they've really grown and, and expanded so much in such a trying time. And for that, and in recognition of all of the hard work that they did as a team, um, we have this year elected Nader Elm as our CEO of the year. And is such, uh, he's done such a hard work since the beginning days of the company and getting them to where they are today. Um, just an impressive individual and such a leader for the team that uh, it was due time that we honored him for all of the hard work that he's put in and uh, the success that we see for Exxon going forward. And so with that, I wanted to be able to, hopefully my team will help me to transition from me uh, on to Nader so that he can, uh, give you a short talk on what they do and where they're going in the future. There's Nader. Thank you, Mark. Excellent. Good. Well, uh, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, uh, very humbled uh, by uh, with the recognition. I want to thank uh, you. I want to thank uh, the whole team at PCI Ventures for all the support that they've given. Like you said, you know, even before the 2020 uh, challenges, even before that, there was all the startup uh, kind of uh, challenges that we had to go through and really appreciate the support that PCI Ventures has given. So um, I am going to share my screen. Uh, let me bring up 
the presentation, uh, actually best thing would be is to do this. Uh, and in essence, what I want to do is uh, take you through uh, an introduction of the company, just basically introduce what it is that we do, and also then to uh, kind of spend the uh, challenges of 2020 uh, and how we kind of rallied around that. So essentially, um, we are as obviously a spin out from the robotics laboratories at Penn, uh, leveraging the research conducted over there with a focus on autonomous uh, robotics. And what you're seeing over here is basically the first instantiation of that, which is an aerial robot. And while you know autonomy as a technology is really, really interesting, it's not what people buy. So what we uh, sell and what people buy is the ability to automate uh, acquisition of really hard to get data. So uh, getting insights and data in areas which are very, very difficult to get, very expensive to get, uh, and in some, sometimes you know, it's very dangerous to get. So uh, one of the taglines that uh, recently came up is basically collecting the people, the data that people uh, might die for. So um, in order to uh, understand the context of this and wh where the value is generated, is basically if you look at all the column inches and all the interest that's uh, been generated by big data, uh, you will have read a lot of stories about the transformational impact that uh, big data has had. But one of the interesting things when you dig into it is the fact that this is uh, really being driven in industry verticals where uh, data is actually quite abundant. They're digitally rich. These are digital native companies like um, tech and telecoms, media or healthcare. But conversely, there's also uh, some you know many trillion dollar industry verticals where we're unkindly calling them digitally staffed. But the challenge they have is the fact that they just don't have the data to be able to put into big data systems, drive the analytics, get better uh, decisions. And those are industry verticals that you will recognize like mining, construction, uh, and even warehousing and infrastructure where, uh, you know, the, there's obviously initiatives to try and get more technology into those environments, but generally it's actually very, very difficult because the environment itself is what presents the challenges. Uh, more often than not, they're actually kind of very large scale, they're disconnected, sometimes dangerous environments. And I'm picking on two over here. One is basically infrastructure inspection, uh, and on the lower one is underground mining, which is uh, generally very dangerous. And you know what we're well, seeing over here are people doing things that they shouldn't be doing, which is actually going into dangerous areas, dangerous cavities, just to gather data using uh, the current state of the art, as you see over there. So um, the problem is also very, very large. Uh, these are multi-trillion dollar industry verticals, and uh, the pain points are measured in the tens, if not hundreds of billions, and if not on the construction side, you'll see it's a $3 trillion annual loss due to the friction caused by uh, the lack of data or bad data. And again, uh, just to underscore the fact that this is not uh, out of a lack of want on the industry vertical side, it's just basically the technologies haven't been there. Uh, and that is the pain point that we are relieving. And this is basically what it looks like. This is the product that we are selling today. It's a fully autonomous aerial robot that requires no pilot. Not only that, it doesn't require any kind of infrastructure in place like GPS, doesn't require communications while it's flying, doesn't require any prior information uh, or any skilled operator. The whole point is all the intelligence is on board the vehicle. And it does that largely because it's got uh, the software on it. Actually, I'm going to show you a video so it'll illustrate what we're doing. But the interesting thing here is the fact that this is the most important thing. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Uh, the logo over here is the Xenero powered by XNAI. Uh, what you physically see in this picture and in the video, it's very compelling to watch, but actually is very unremarkable because everything that you see is off the shelf. The real hard part and what we focus on are the algorithms and the software that goes on board the, the vehicle so that it's got the smarts and the intelligence to be able to navigate without anyone or any help uh, to be able to go through very, very challenging cluttered environments, gathering the data and successfully returning from a mission uh, and uploading the data. 
So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a one minute uh, video. I'm hoping that audio will also come through. So this is something that we generated really just to uh, highlight uh, what, what it is we do and hopefully illustrates uh, the power of uh, what it is we do. Hold on. So let me. Introducing the world's first drone to be flown by a dog. The X and Arrow. GPS denied. Survey grade. Piloted by X and AI so it can go where dogs and humans can't. So easy, even Cody can do it. Learn more about Cody, Chief Dog Officer, at exon.com slash Cody. So uh, the key point I want to make over here is the fact that, you know, what you saw over there wasn't any camera trickery. There was actually nothing uh, kind of sleight of hand over there. It really was Cody uh, just putting a paw on the uh, tablet and the robot really took over the mission from there and executed everything fully autonomously underground with absolutely no assistance. Um, now, the fun fact around this is that uh, it wasn't supposed to be a dog. It was supposed to be a turtle. And uh, our turtle wrangler uh, actually caught COVID last year. And, uh, and that happened the night before the actual shoot. So we already had a mine booked. We had a film crew booked. Uh, and at the last minute, we actually, uh, one of our employees has a dog, Cody. And uh, so we had to do a talent swap. Um, so that might be a good segue in terms of uh, kind of describing uh, the 2020 year in review and what we were able to achieve uh, despite the difficult times. As Michael uh, described, it, it was uh, a critical part of our business, you know, is mining uh, and mines are obviously uh, around the world. So a uh, real necessary part of our sales process and business development is to travel to our customers around the world because frankly, they just don't believe that we do what we do. They want to see it and they want to see it in their minds. So uh, through 2019, we were ramping up our customers. We were traveling all around the world, demonstrating technology, signing on customers, and all of that came to a critical halt with all the travel restrictions that were in place. But uh, you know what? We didn't stand still. Uh, internally, we grew. Uh, what you'll see over here is the fact that in terms of our internal team, we nearly doubled our workforce. You'll see. We obviously hit a pause uh, as we were trying to understand the ramifications of the pandemic, what it is we were going to be uh, doing in terms of reorienting the business. But uh, we realized two things. Number one, the interest was persistent and growing. There were more and more mining companies now focused on safety. They were focused on automation and greater investments in technology. So we saw our funnel growing. Uh, and therefore, we just basically set about trying to figure out how to satiate that demand without having to travel. That required us to somewhat reorient our, uh, our hiring so we could focus on hardening our platform, doing things remotely. And that's basically what you see over here was a rapid growth. Uh, while we saw the opportunity to acquire great talent that we frankly might not have had access to before. We also strengthened uh, our board and advisors. We brought on uh, as an independent uh, director, Katharina McFarland, who was uh, her last job was basically the assistant secretary uh, for defense for acquisitions. And Mark Bigham, who was the chief innovation officer at the largest uh, business line in Raytheon Technologies. And of course, you see over there, Cody, we put him to work because uh, he's cheap. He works for dog treats and uh, you know, he was very effective, actually not very effective at doing hardware inspections, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take any extra hands or paws where we can get them. Uh, on the operations side, we also kind of ramped up uh, manufacturing. Uh, we outsourced it to external uh, contract manufacturing, which uh, improved the quality and drove down the price, which is a very significant development for us. Uh, and as I said, we started focusing on remote delivery and training. 
which led us to new product launches. What you saw over there was the Xen Aero. That's the latest generation of our product. But we also took uh, the opportunity to take the payload off and create a mapping payload. So the, the autonomy core actually is what's needed for the mapping. So we have a new product that we've launched, new revenue streams, and a lot of interest in the Xen Pack. On the software side, we also uh, launched something called Scoutonomy, which is uh, unparalleled in the world of robotics right now, in that, uh, sorry, at least in the commercial side, in that it increases dramatically the usability function because you as an operator, all you have to do is now draw a cube and the robot will then systematically set about uh, exploring that space without any intervention or any further direction from the uh, operator. And in the midst of all of this, we also, uh, our neighbor uh, in our offices happened to move in. Uh, they were a brewery and we collaborated on uh, basically launching a new beer, Swarm Intelligence IPA. So what you're seeing is basically our robot delivering some ingredients into a tank. Uh, and this is the label that went onto the cans uh, in our collaboration. So that was a little bit of a side benefit, but it also helped drive a lot of uh, press attention. So we got uh, obviously food and wine over there. Forbes uh, kind of covered us and that uh, video that you saw over there. Uh, and it was interesting because they really understood the context of the video while it's lighthearted and humorous, the actual messaging over there was very, very serious. And they dug into that and that generated a lot of attention. Uh, separately, we got recognized, we we're privileged to be recognized uh, in other rewards. Uh, PCI Ventures actually recognized us for the deal of the year with Sandvik. Uh, South by Southwest, we were a finalist in the Innovation Award. We think we would have won had they actually uh, carried on with South by Southwest, but it got canceled. And the preeminent publication in the space, which is a Robotics Business Review, recognized us as one of the top 50 uh, innovators in the robotics space last year as well. So we got a lot of attention that helped really drive awareness, which then kind of resulted in our funnel, as I said, uh, really kind of filling up. So we had a lot of new customers signing on. Uh, indirectly, we kind of started dealing with some of those uh, customer opportunities through channel partners uh, and we established partnerships in Australia and Africa uh, with CR Kennedy and Rocket Mine, uh, established software partnerships with the preeminent uh, software players in the mining space and also signed on some strategics including Sandvik at the end of their by no means um, kind of uh, small uh, agreement over there. So Sandvik uh, if you don't know them, they are basically the caterpillar in the underground space. Um, large equipment, uh, what you're seeing over here is what they're known for is basically the loader trucks. That wheel is taller than I am. Uh, I'm nearly six foot. Uh, and essentially what they have done is they've innovated in turning their vehicles into driverless cars, driverless vehicles in the underground space. Uh, so we are very complementary in that we can fly and go into areas that their vehicles can't. So we announced that partnership in September, which is very significant because they have global reach and uh, presence around the world, but also now we're collaborating on uh, co-developing certain solutions. So our software has now been integrated into their software. And later on this year, we'll be making further announcements in September, uh, notably the uh, largest mining conference will be in Las Vegas and we'll be making an, an, a very significant announcement then. And one of the important things is basically, uh, you know, it's obviously we're signing on customers and various partners, but so we're now becoming firmly embedded in the mining ecosystem and are being recognized as the go-to for this kind of a solution. And we've taken this model in the mining where we've kind of seen success and we're also now leveraging that uh, for government and defense opportunities where NQTEL uh, has uh, kind of become a partner for us and an investor in the company, which has allowed us now to start repurposing what we've developed in the commercial world and now applying it in uh, government world for sending the same kinds of robots into other dangerous unknown environments that gather other kinds of data. I can't go uh, into more details beyond that. 
But nevertheless, we've uh, gone into those two industry verticals. As we look into the future, we see many, many branches of opportunity for us. So what you're seeing over here in the highlighted areas are basically what we're doing right now. Obviously, we're in the subterranean world. We've developed a new product to do 3D mapping. We're doing tactical um, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions for government uh, departments. But we also see huge opportunities in other verticals, uh, industrial inspection, logistics, security. Uh, those are opportunities coming to us. And the bottom over here, you'll see uh, kind of the kinds of products that we're uh, developing. So obviously right now, we're relatively large aerial products. Uh, we're now shrinking everything down so we can fit through doors. Uh, but there's absolutely no reason why our software can't go onto ground-based vehicles. We're seeing a lot of interest in underwater. And if you can imagine, if you look further ahead, if you've got autonomous vehicles, all different types, what would it look like to have them collaborating with each other on a mission uh, and kind of having multi-agent swarms? Uh, our technology already takes that into consideration. So that's a peek into the future for us. Um, so that will then lead us into the next big ramp up for us, which is basically taking our software, the XNAI intelligence, and licensing it to other manufacturers, solutions integrators, anyone who really wants to kind of have an autonomy core enabling their application. That's basically where we see a lot of ramp up uh, of uh, opportunity for us. So obviously, all, all that's uh, the story of uh, Exxon, uh, and none of that would have been possible without the incredible team that we have. Uh, this is the last picture we took uh, before the pandemic set in. Uh, so what you're seeing over here is basically half the company. Uh, we've virtually doubled since then. And uh, you know, again, I, I want to tip my hat and uh, gracious thanks to uh, all the hard work the team has put in, despite all the challenging uh, challenging things that have been thrown their way all the way through 2020. So uh, I'll be uh, at the Exxon table later on. Happy to answer any questions uh, over there. I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much, Nader. And, thank and congratulations to you and the team. And and to Cody, I'm a huge advocate for, for more dogs and innovation. So thank you for that. All right. Um, so, um, so thank you again and congratulations. Um, thank you, Michael, for that great overview of all these impressive founders and their companies.